Hey everyone, LSDJ here, giving you a little um, 2.7 patch analysis. Um, I did one of these for like 2.2 .2 or something like that, and uh, people seem to like it, so I'm just gonna do it for fun. Um, I haven't played the patch too much because I only got back like a day ago, but I played a little bit. I've done some little bit of testing, and uh, everything else is kind of just theory. So. Getting right into it, they have the special gauge changes for individual weapons based like how much you lose when you die. And I like I definitely like the change. It's um it allows them to have a different lever to balance the game with that isn't like nerfing the specials directly. So you can nerf the dynamo without nerfing every other echo weapon that exists in the game. And I thought I think it's actually a good idea because I never actually thought of this so it, I really like it, and in some ways it buffs like every other weapon in comparison to all these ones it changes. So um, They hit pretty much all the main bubble weapons, they hit a lot of Kraken weapons, and they hit, weirdly, I, like the Splatter Scope and the Splat Charger are in the large reduction area, which are, it's kind of a strange thing for me because I didn't think that those were even close to overpowered. So they... I think they might have done that preemptively because they think because of some other changes that are coming in, and I'll talk about those later, but um, essentially they're, I think they're preemptively thinking that you're going to see more splat chargers. Um, but overall, I really, really like this, and it's going to open up a lot of things. It's going to force weapons that um, really need their specials to run a lot of special saver. Like you're gonna, Every time somebody runs a bubble, you're going to see like three mains of special saver on that on that person. Um, player performance balance changes. Swim speed reduced by about 10% when any of these weapons are equipped. So basically all the big heavy weapons like Dynamo, Dynamo E-Leader and Hydra all got hit with this. The Hydra didn't really need that nerf, but it kind of makes sense in the long run. Um, the E-Leader is probably the one that's most hurt by this because... Or actually, the Dynamo is the most hurt, no doubt. But E-Leader definitely gets is going to feel it because now that they're now when you actually get a flank on an e-leader it's a lot harder for them to get away from you and it that ties into another nerf that they have later on to burst bombs which I'll go over so main weapon balance changes splash matics um initiative velocity increased by about 10% spread reduced by about 10% and range increased by about 10% so the spread isn't really that big of a change because it was already a pretty accurate weapon, but the range is really nice and the velocity is probably the biggest. Um, the range basically makes it the same as a Tenetech. It's only it's very very slightly less than a Tenetech now, so essentially it's on that same tier of weapons, and um, I think it's got potential to be a pretty good like pretty up there as far as um, these low low mid range weapons go um it'd be hard to say for sure without letting it develop a little further but it's definitely a a welcome buff to the splash o matic line um end zaps radius of the droplets that fall before the shot hits has been increased by about seven percent intervals between the droplets that fall before the shot hits have been reduced these it just make means that the end zap paints a little better it's not a huge difference. Um, it'll make the 89 a little bit better in its job of just turf coverage, so it doesn't it doesn't hurt and you know every little bit gives ends up just a little, one more reason to be used over the Tenetech. I don't I don't think this is gonna th be the thing that pushes it over the edge. Um, but you might see it once in a while now. Uh, Splattershot Pro, Forge Splattershot Pro, easily the most buffed weapon in this patch. Um, range increase about by about five percent, which is you know it's nice, but it's not like a huge one. What's really huge here is this initial velocity of shots increased by about twenty percent. I'm gonna get all right. A huge part of the reason that you the in the meta before this that you saw low range weapons like Tenetech and uh, well Tenetech mainly do and fifty two do really well is because. 
they aren't punished as hard by um, the time it takes for your shots to hit a person from when they're fired. So you don't have to lead your shots as bad, which means that latency doesn't hurt you as bad, and you don't have to predict your opponent. You don't have to predict your opponent's movement as hard. So it was really felt with the Splattershot Pro and the Dual Sculpture and the Jet Sculpture, where it's like, even if you have really good aim, you could get punished because it's like you can't out predict them. Like even if you do predict well, it takes so long for it to go. It's like you could just turn around and get out of the shots. So um, this is a really huge, huge buff, and I wish that they did this to the dual sculpture as well. And it's kind of with the new. Um, with the new Splattershot Pro kit, which is the Berry Pro, which has Suction Bomb, Suction Rush, um, Dual Sculpture is pretty much dead until they give it either a new kit or some buffs. Um, it'll be hard to argue to run the splash or to run the dual any version of the Dual Sculpture over the Pro or the ninety six now. Um, ninety six gal, it got nerfed and damaged so that it can uh, if you're the opponent runs defense up, you uh only two, or you'll three shot them. So it forces ninety six gals to itemize with some damage up. And uh spread reduced by about eleven percent to compensate for that, which makes the uh regular ninety six gal a lot better in comparison to some other weapons now. Especially when you factor in that a lot of the weapons that have splash walls got are getting nerfed with the or a lot of the weapons that have splash walls are gonna get comparatively worse with this new patch. So um, regular 96 is going to, you're going to see that around a lot more. Um, jet Sculpture gets a huge movement speed increase. Um, I don't know if run speed Jet Sculpture is going to be a thing, but it, you know, it definitely is noticeable now. Um, I really, it, it would have been nice if it got that same velocity buff that the Splash Up Pro got, but overall it's just, you know, another reason. They're just trying to, Basically, I feel like this buff was just kind of get get the jet sculptures noticed. I don't think it was really a buff that's intended to make it like good. I think they think it's already good, and it's true in some sense. But the custom jet sculptures kit got nerfed pretty hard with this patch, so it's gonna be. Hard. I don't know. I don't know that you're gonna see that much more of it. It'll be kind of like a pocket pick that you'll see once in a while. Uh, carbon roller in consumption with flinging ink reduced by about thirty percent. Okay, it's not. It's just a little bit of love. It's nothing special, really. Um, all right, chargers. This is a really interesting change. It's exactly what I suggested that they would do probably back in October. Um, what they did is, if, the, if you haven't fully charged the weapon, the range is reduced by about 20%. Um, and uh, it's the same for e -Leader. And then it, you know, it gave it a little range buff when it's fully charged. For the splat chargers, and they gave it a little bit of a charge time buff to for the e -Leaders. And um, I, this adds a very interesting dynamic in the charger matchup. Because the e -Leader scopes, if they don't fully charge, they are now outranged by the splatter scopes when they are fully charged. So a fully charged splatter scope slightly outranges a, f a partial charge e-leader. Which, um, I don't know that that is going to break the matchup. Like, I don't think e-leader is going to suddenly not be used. I just think instead of winning 90%, like, having a 90% matchup favorability over the splatter scopes, it's got, like, a 75 now. It's just a little bit cooler. And I, I want to see how that develops with this change because um as you know like i'm a i'm a kelp splatter scope main it's like my favorite weapon and uh i'd really love to see a world where you don't have to run e-leader every game and kelp splatter scope and splatter scopes can shine a little bit um overall i don't think they did enough to hurt the e-leader here i think it's um still going to be used in the vast majority of games and honestly, I wish that they had made this punishment for the for the e leader specifically, the range when not fully charged. I wish that was like seventy percent on the e leader. 
because the E leader is not punished hard enough for, or it doesn't have enough of a trade off for being as long range as it is. The intended trade off is that it has a long charge time, but partial charge just kind of removes that. And 20% I don't think is quite enough. It's good. This is the exact, exact change that I wanted them to do. It's just not. My guess is this isn't enough to make it so that the E leader isn't like super common. I think you'll, I mean, I think you'll see some kelp splatter scopes now, but only from people that like really want to play the kelp splatter scope. I think the E leader is still overall the better weapon to run in a team comp. If you're, if you're running it as your only charger anyway. Um, Slosher got a fire rate increase by 20%, and uh, basically it also got a 26% increase in hit stun, which uh, I played a lot of Slosher yesterday, and I honestly, I didn't notice the second part, but the fire rate is definitely a nice buff, nice change. Um, Hydra Splatlings increased the damage per shot when fully charged from 28 to 35, which means that three shots when you fully charge it now, which it's okay, but... Fully charging it is usually not the best way to go, so it's not... I don't think this is something that's huge. You're not going to suddenly see a bunch of Hydra Splatlings, so... Um, it's cool. It'll be interesting to see where the Hydra mains go with it, but... I don't think it's a, the fix it needed. Alright, and here's probably the second... the other biggest change. And that's Burst Bombs. They basically completely reworked burst bombs. It uh, now takes 40% of your ink instead of 25%, which means you can only throw two of them. Uh, it weakened the knockback effect, which means that you're not getting like slapped around when you're getting hit by a bunch of burst bombs. And the uh, radius for dealing the minimum damage is reduced by 20%. But in exchange, they increased the minimum damage by 5, which means that if you hit four burst bombs for minimum rate damage, you'll always kill them. Or not always if they're running defense, but you'll get a kill. And then uh, radius for dealing medium damage is increased by about 14%. And the uh, painting radius is increased by 43%. So the painting radius is basically to counter, give it this about the same painting efficiency as it did before, but you can only throw two instead of four. And then... The other changes basically sums up to it's rewarding you more for being accurate and less for being inaccurate. So overall, like basically what this hurts is it hurts one, the E leader, the regular E leader. It means that it's not gonna like have like this huge advantage when you get close range on it, because it can't just like run around and burst on the floor and uh knock you around and get and get you killed. So getting flanks on E-leaders is going to be much more rewarding. And it's also going to really, really hurt the uh, Hitzel style of spamming burst bombs in a given area and hoping that you can like either get a kill or make people back off. Um, you're going to see weapons like the... Or we weapons like the Jet Squelcher, it's not going to really be noticed at all. You're... Not usually spamming burst bombs in most scenarios, and it's probably actually a buff for the weapons like that because now you can ha more easily clean people up with um, medium damage or better, and uh, you don't have to run as much damage up to get um, cleanup kills with uh, burst bombs now. So I, I think it's definitely an interesting way to go with burst bombs, and I think I, I kind of saw this coming as soon as they did the sub saver nerf because. Um, I knew that stick, like when they did the sub, sub saver, I mean sub saver buff. When they did the sub saver buff, that meant that if you stacked enough sub saver, you could throw six burst bombs in a single tank, which is really absurd. And people just hadn't quite figured that out yet, so like you didn't really see it, but it was gonna. I like I knew it was gonna happen eventually. And um, this is like this is the answer to that. They knew that was gonna be a little ridiculous, so um, this is a nice change, and I like it. Um, it also helps it against that, um, that bomb sniffer, um, buff, so it's, like, it's not punished as hard as it was, like, with that bomb sniffer buff, you could basically ignore burst bombs in general, and now, if, if the enemy's accurate, you can't really ignore burst bombs still. 
uh, ink mine, you, ink consumption slightly reduced, and you can set one when art one has already been replaced. Makes it definitely definitely makes it better. You don't have to constantly think about like is this. You can uh, reposition your ink mine essentially, so it's really nice. I wish it made the other one explode. If it made if it made the old ink mine explode, I think ink mines would suddenly be really good. And I don't think it would be overpowered because if you can get yourself in a position where an ink mine is effective, you should be able to reward re be rewarded for that. So um, I'd really love to see that added to it eventually, but right now this is just kind of like a quality of li quality of life change, and uh, it doesn't mean that ink mines suddenly going to be like a sought after sub, but now weapons that have ink mine aren't going to be as hindered as they were. Um, Seeker change, painting width increased by about 38%, movement speed increased by about 3%, um, slight buff, uh, it's, I don't know if it's huge, but it's definitely helpful for certain maps where Seekers are really good. Um, splash wall, even if the splash wall is used on a slope so that it hits the ground immediately, it will still take as long to activate when it is used on flat ground. This is actually a really big nerf. Um, before, if you play 52 or play 96 gal or whatever, you would want to position yourself in ways where you're close to ramps, like vertical ramps, so that you're not necessarily at the bottom of the ramp, but you're right below the ramp, so that when you throw a splash wall, it lands right in front of you, and it's like instantly out. This, this nerf is probably the most... It's, it's definitely one of the biggest, best nerfs they could have done to splash wall. And I don't think it's like, you know, kills Splash Ball in any way, but I definitely think that it reduces its potency a lot. And I wish they kind of added to it a, like an increased deploy time overall as well. But um, I'd like to see where this goes because I feel like certain weapons, like 52 especially, is gonna is gonna feel this nerf a lot. I don't think the 52 is bad now. I just think it's. It, you're not going to see it in every game anymore. It's going to be a... Except from, like, 52 mains, you probably won't see it every game. You'll probably just see it as, like, a certain pick if you want to run Splash Walls and uh, Killer Whales. Um, ink Strike Change. Time needed to fire after selecting target reduced by about 33%. This is really, like, a quarter to a half second change um, between when you activate your special and when it actually lands. So... It's helpful, but I don't know if it's really a huge buff. I think Ink Strike's currently underused a little bit, especially on certain maps like uh, Urchin Underpass. And, uh, like, Urchin Underpass and, um, what's the other one I thought of? Uh, Triggerfish. Um, Ink Strike's really good at, like, forcing people out of, out of locations. And, uh, this just, you know, gives people a reason to try it out a little more. And then... Huge change right here. Um, wall hacks change. Um, essentially, huge nerf to cold blooded. You're instead of seventy five percent, it only does fifty percent, and they also reduced the amount of time that you get from echo and haunt in general, so it's even less effective for cold blooded. Cold blooded is definitely still good, and I think weapons that like want to flank a lot are still going to run it. Like ten attacks and uh, things like that, and uh, I think Echo also got hurt really bad with this change because now it's not like objectively better than Point Sensor and Haunt. I don't think, and I think what what's going to happen is you're going to see less Echoes. You probably won't see them every game anymore, and you're going to see a lot of Point Sensors and a lot of people running Haunt. Um. And then, like, one person per team will probably have cold-blooded on. Point sensors are going to be really good. Like, really, really, really good. And, um... Haunt's going to be really common as well. Flank... Basically, overall, with, with this change, it really, really nerfs flanking... Like, flanking playstyles. You're still going to want to flank, but it's not going to have, like, the huge potency it, it did before. Where, like, you could... If you got a good flank, you could wipe the whole team... Whereas now, like, you know, if you get if you get a good flank, you're probably gonna get haunted or point censored. And uh it'll it'll last for enough of a time 
a long enough period of time that you're gonna get killed. And most of the time when you're flanking in that scenario, you're kind of not in the greatest position to get away. So what's gonna happen now is it's gonna be flanking is gonna be more of an assassin kind of style where you, you kind of flank, kill the charger, and jump out. Because you're gonna get revealed and you're not gonna be able to do anything. So um yeah, it's definitely gonna hurt people like, you know, people that play like fuzzy who like their con their play style is purely based around um flanking and assassinating people so i don't think it's going to like make them like make that play style irrelevant i think it's just going to reduce the how effective it is it's not going to be like so good that you can wipe a team it's just going to be like you get an assassination and then you get out so um i'd like to see how i i, I want to i really want to see how this plays out um the new weapons talk about those for a second before i uh end this um the biggest, the best one probably is the Berry Splattershot Pro with the Selection Bomb, bomb Rush. I, with the with the Splattershot Pro changes, um, I think you're going to see this a lot. You're going to see this one, and you're going to see the Forge Pro a lot, a lot, a lot. Probably in every game you'll see one of the two. And then um, Wasabi Splattershot is pretty good. Um, you'll see it probably on Splat Zones a few times, and you know it won't be completely uncommon. Um, the one I'm, the one I was really excited about was a Squiffer, a uh, Suction Bomb Kraken. It's a really, really good kit for it, and, uh, it's probably the best solo queue kit it could have. But I don't think it's going to suddenly make the weapon viable in competitive play. Um, the Squiffer is just way, like, punished way too hard for missing, missing shots, especially when you factor in that when people get really good, they know how to kind of juke out shots. So the thing that Squiffer needs is some way to deal with being with mi with missing a shot. And um what I really would love to see from Nintendo is to buff the Squiffer in a way that increases its mobility. So when you have a full charge held, I'd like it to like have the movement speed, like really high movement speed of like a ten attack or something. And then like I'd also like to see the Squiffer not being punished for uh, jumping while charging. Um, I think if it had those changes, it the weapon would be like really, really good, and I'd love to see that. And I don't think it would really be overpowered because you're still you're still punished pretty hard for missing. But now, like while you're charging, you can kind of outplay your opponent opponent with that change, and I'd love to see that. And I don't think we will. Um, and I think until something like that happens, the Squiffer is just not going to be that good. Um, this is probably the best ink brush kit. Um, uh, Splat Bomb Kraken. And you'll probably see it a few times. And then Soda Slosher, Splat Bomb Minsuka. Um, it's a good alternative to the Slosher Deco. It'll depend on team comps and stuff like that. And now that Slosher's a little bit better in general because of the shot increase or the shot speed increase it's um it's a nice change um bamboozler mark two burst bomb ink strike it's okay um i think the disruptor echo one's still better in general but um this one's not too bad uh splatling burst bomb bomb rush um whatever the, the burst bomb changes kind of make this not that good uh, the Tempered Dynamo Roller. So this one's interesting because, in general, I think it's still worse than the regular Dynamo with the Sprinkler Echo, but on maps like Triggerfish and Port Mackerel, this is probably the Dynamo you'll see if people run Dynamo at all. Because Killer Whale and Seeker are really good on linear maps, and they're also really good on Rainmaker. So, like, Rainmaker... Port Mackerel and Rainmaker Triggerfish, you, you, you'll probably see this Dynamo pretty often. Um, yeah, that's, that's really all the changes that they did. Um, my overall thoughts is, I think the low-medium range weapons got a little worse, like 52, 10 attack, stuff like that. And long-range long weapons got a lot better, because I think we're going to see less splash walls in general, because there's more good weapons with splat bombs and it's harder to get 
or it's um more punishing to have splash ball if you do it wrong. Um the dual sculpture is basically irrelevant now. Um every weapon in its class got buffed and it was already the weakest one in its class, so it's I it really needs some love. I'm hoping that if they come up with a new kit for it it'll be really good, or if they when the the next set of weapons comes out they uh they kinda buff it because it it's gonna need some love. Like I I don't see any reason anybody would run it now. Um Wall hacks are different. You're going to see a lot more haunt. You're going to see a lot less cold blooded. And I wish the squ I really wish that squiffer got some better buffs. And uh I really I want to see the way the um E leader changes match up with the kelp kelp changes. I think um I don't think people quite figured out that a partial charge E leader is outranged by a kelp or uh, by splatter scopes now. I think when people start figuring that out, you're going to see more people wanting to run kelp on some maps like uh black belly and stuff like that. Um, but I still think you leaders, you probably see one in 90% of games. I don't think it was nerfed hard enough, and uh, it's probably still going to be overused. Um, the other thing I want to mention is invincibility specials hardly got touched at all, except for in the case where you're going to see them a little less often if the enemy dies because of the um, the buffs to the reduction, or the nerfs to reduction, I guess I would, is what it would be. Um, bubble is still really, 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 really good. And if people, if people run special saber, you're they're still gonna get it probably just as often. So I really wish they had done more nerfs to that because I think right now they're too strong. They allow one person to um kind of force a situation that they shouldn't be able to. I I think that they're very important for the game. Invincibility, invincibility specials in general, and I think uh, it's part of the reason that setups like this game isn't really campy and setupy. But it really needs; they're really they're too strong compared to how little coordination they take. I, I love to see a meta game that revolves more more around coordinating specials and less about having a bunch of invincibility specials. So um, that's a change I'd like to see if there's the next patch. Um, and overall, I think they hit all the important things, and I think this is probably going to end up being the most healthy meta that we've had since release. Um, but I think you're going to find in the long term that weapons like the 52 gal and the 96 gal are still going to be pretty popular. And 10 attack is still going to be really popular. Dynamo is still going to be really popular. Um, but it won't be so dominant anymore. You won't see like the same weapons in every game. And uh, I think it's it's opening up a scenario where I think at the high end of competitive play you're going to start pe start seeing people have like um specific comps against specific players um to like deal with them in certain ways. And uh I think that makes the game more interesting in the long run. So, yeah, it's cool. I'm excited to see how it turns out. And uh I'm glad I'm glad that they did this patch because the game was really getting stale, um, and this definitely helps. You're still gonna see a lot of Krakens, you're gonna still see a lot of bubblers, um, but you're also gonna see some new weapons and a little more variety. So that's cool. I like it. Um, thanks for watching.